Welcome back to working on, on metal prints. Um, last time we were talking about painting the artwork. Uh, we've already addressed uh, all the different techniques we've used. So the, the last thing we have is just how do we mount the, this work. And I usually use a combination of a couple things. Either, either uh, glue or screws or glue and screws. It's pretty simple. Now, I've had a few of these guys. We'll get to these guys in just a second here. I've skipped a couple steps on these guys so I can talk to talk to you about um, not using the whole material. This is one of my paint panels that I had that I didn't really like all the rest of it, so I cut this out. And it fit perfectly on this little wooden panel here, which is just a nice piece of, of wood that I've, I've lacquered up a little bit. But it needed a little bit more. So I made a new insert. And so I'll be able to, to, to go through and mount this on top of here, mainly because I also removed the middle part of this section here. But this is all just glued down. And you can see screw finishing screws. They don't really affect the artwork too much. But sometimes they add to it. And we'll talk about screws as well. This guy. <clears throat> was a section of wood and I usually do like little guys like this all the time and the original concept was I take it and I can mount like a nice decorative piece of, of, of aluminum to the top of it and then this would go behind it but I didn't really particularly have a wish or want for that so all I did was I do, did a decorative uh, art process on the wood so when it stands out it really it really pops out on top there Alright, so that's one thing to consider is you don't have to use the whole the whole panel. You can remove pieces and just have it all layered, or you can even uh, collage the work together, so to speak. Now, talking about panels, there's not a whole lot to this. I I usually use either some sort of reclaimed wood, and, and I never really even hide the fact that it's reclaimed. All I do is clean it up, maybe do a decorative process so that way it, it has some sort of interest to the outside of it when it's all mounted. Or I'll use like MDF and I'll do the same thing, you know, to make it so it looks interesting, has a nice little beveled edge on the outside. You know, nothing too fancy. Uh, but you know, just just work with what you got. Work, work with what you want. As you can see, I use everything from uh, natural wood to full plot, point, uh, full boards. I think this was a piece of oak or something. Uh, the these guys are all just uh, plywood door of some sort that I I reclaimed that somebody threw in my back alleyway, and I thought the wood was nice and thick and and definitely could have been used for something else so there it is uh, MDF is good uh, that thick almost mason light masonite looking material is good you can use just about anything you can think of All right, now onto the glues there are dozens of, of adhesives out there Sometimes simple works the best, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I've gone so far as to use two-part putty epoxy that comes in like a tube. You rip off a little punk, you, you, you knead it up into it to a little even consistency, and you put it down a bead and you can just press it down and it'll hold it because it's an epoxy. But it's just a, like a, a, a putty form of it. That being said, wood glue. Nothing wrong with wood glue. Just put it on, it will, it will stick to the back side of all your stuff, and it will work fantastic. I personally like to, to use Gorilla Glue, because it's an expanding foam glue. So it gets into like all the little pieces inside of your work, which is good, because if you have raised up spots, it'll cushion that eventually. Whereas the wood glue will probably just sit below that, but on the back side, like this guy, I didn't clean this one up yet. If you notice, it squished out a little bit. 
which is all right. It, we've all been there. So you just got to take a little bit of time. Take out your little your little zip blade. And just make sure you clean it up just a little bit. You're just you're not trying to go for the whole gouging through any sort of layer. You're just trying to get just the excess off. Usually wiping helps out if you if you're being very attentive, but if you if you leave it for a couple hours because it's taken for a while, it, it can happen. And it doesn't take much. I'll probably go through and clean this up a little bit more, sand it, and just trim it and just take my time. But it will eventually look very nice and clean. And then I can move on to the lacquer. And But this guy right here was pretty simple. All I did was just uh, put down a very, very thin layer of Gorilla Glue. And then I took a card here and I just completely wiped it up. So it was just a very, very thin layer. And then I put a piece of plastic, or uh, in this case, I put uh, parchment paper down because it doesn't, nothing sticks to parchment paper because it's a Teflon based paper. And then um, just put uh, another piece of wood and just lightly clamped it down just so it made full contact onto this wood here. And then after about a day or so, it was just like this. I went through after a little while and cleaned it up, but. You know, that sometimes happens. Same thing with this guy. This guy I've got clamped down. Same thing. And you can see I've cleaned it up a little bit with it. This one sort of, I got, went back a little bit, a couple times just to make sure everything was all copacetic. Wiped down the edges a little bit more. So I have a little bit less cleanup on this guy. And you can see where the excess glue is sort of glossier than the, the backside. And I'm fine with that. The big thing is i got to clean up like only two or three spots which is more important on panels like this because I can't get all the way into that, that panel cleanly. All right, so. Let's talk, let's glue this guy up. All right. And so what we'll do is we're using the, uh, the Gorilla Glue here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a thin little layer on here because I got a lot of deep grooves. That, that I will have to fight to try to get some some strength out of. I don't need to do a whole lot because this will expand a whole lot more than what it, what it thinks it will. And it's a little bit colder out too, so it'll take a little bit longer for it to cure. So there's going to be a little bit of a time jump on this. And don't worry about going too heavy just in case because, like I said, you're going to spread this around. So, doesn't require much. I don't try to go straight to the full edge because it will squish a little bit. What I'm going for is even and consistent. So when this thing tries to expand out, it will fill all these little grooves here. And this glue is fantastic because it will stick to just about anything. It's sandable, it's cuttable, it's trimmable, and you can use it on things like metal, foam, and wood. So it's it's a it's a good all around uh, utilitarian glue. And so what I'll do is I'll just stick this guy right here. And I'll need to put equal pressure on here. So let, let me show you how to do that real quick. So in order to make sure that any glue that sticks out here doesn't stick to whatever I'm going to clamp it to, try to find something that the glue won't really stick to. Piece of parchment paper will work. That's just a piece of uh, just a scrap plastic. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it just is. It, it is not paper or foam or metal because it will stick. To the, this glue will stick like the Dickens to this. 
And I just make sure I take a piece of like a scrap wood, which you can notice is very similar to another piece of wood that I used. And I just take it and I find a clamp. And these guys are inexpensive. I think I, they're like a dollar at Harbor Freight or something like that. Not going for compression because uh, we don't want to flatten this panel out too much. And we aren't going to go for completely distorting the panel. We're just trying to go for making it have a little bit of flatness. That's what this panel is for. We're not clamping directly to here. We're clamping through something else that is rigid. And this will will sit. I can make a little bit of a small make sure everything else sits copacetic. And that's it. We're going to make a cut for this one. Uh, like Once we get done with that one being cured, I'll take a uh, finish up video on that one. For this one though, this one, I'm planning on screwing this one down. Now this one I chose to have a little bit more of a, a border on this one just because I, I think this one does better with it having a little bit more of a, of a fun color to work with whereas the other one is pretty close to the border. This one I think needed a little bit of extra. And for this one we're going to use some Gorilla Glue as well. Now with this one, I have punch outs, so we're not going to put any glue anywhere near here because I don't want foam squishing up through the top of my artwork. So for this, I'm just putting glue in the bottom third and up at the top. There's going to be a reason for that, and I'll show you why. Alright, taking my little duber. Make sure it's all into the spots where I want it to. Give me some good coverage. Good connection. All right, now, when I get this guy on here, I'm going to hold this one down by a different method. This one has a deep pillow emboss and I've designed this out specifically because I'm going to use a screw. And I always have a, a, a container full of small screws or, or something like that. And knowing what to use is, is half the battle. Because sometimes I might use a small tack. I found these guys a, lot, a long time ago. I'm down to like the last six of them so I gotta find some more. They're actually not like steel or copper. Like a, you might find some, some of these guys in copper, but this one's actually in aluminum, and it works really well because it's such a small head. It's just a small little little tack head, so it doesn't have like a screw pattern to it or anything like that. It looks a little bit more utilitarian versus uh, commercially made. Some of these guys work fantastic because they're just so small and I, I you can buy like a box of them for, for next to nothing but I can also take these guys screw them into a dowel and then just sand down the head a little bit like on the sides and I can get the profile a little bit smaller but I can also make them look a little bit more uh, rustic looking and I don't mind the little flush shape on there because it, sometimes it might add to it the hardest part though it's making sure this goes through all the way. When I do this, I usually have an odd screw in here. And uh, I love the drywall screws. Like I have a container full of like some odd drywall screws um, because I got a punch in here. And so all I got to do is I can just find where I'm going to put that screw punch it through the aluminum a little bit and I just tap it gives me a guide hole and a little bit of screwing in place with an extreme angle for you guys
and you see it starts to get in, get right into that little groove here. I'll do that to all four corners, and when this is all done, um, I'll probably cut over to the finished video of how these guys will look and how they all uh, how I'll uh, handle all the glue issues that I'll be encountering in the, in, in the near future with these guys. Um, so, see you in a few minutes. All right, so we now have uh, my panel glued down with all the screws in the panels. As you can see, it's reasonably flat. There's no gaps in any of the, the weird places in here. Um, it, it sits nice and cleanly. I do have a little bit of glue bleed out already, so you can just wipe that stuff away if you need to. It's not going to hurt anything. And this is this is why I only did it worked with just putting the glue here and here because that's where the screws are going to be. Everything else is going to be held down nice and cleanly. I'm not too worried about it. There is a little bit of a give right here, but I don't want any glue near this just because I don't want that to come squishing out if it even had a chance. Um, plus, in order to get this one, because it's such a deep bowl, uh, in order to get this area here completely flat, I'd need to use like a piece of foam or something like that, and then just so it compresses it all down flat. And I've never had good success with it because it always, for some reason, causes it causes bowing in, in weird places, and I don't like that. Um, but so for this one right here, I didn't even need to clamp it down; I just had it screwed into the corners here. So decorative uses or decorative looks behind through that. Would that have been different if I just tacked it down? Probably. I mean, I wouldn't have seen too much. It would have been a small little silver head on there. Or if you find some uh, finishing nails and you have a thick enough material, you know, a nice little round round silver tip on there. But uh, I personally like to, to have those additions on there because it looks nice and clean. It still looks looks professional. It's still nice, a nice little screw head. And if I needed to, I could even grind those guys down, like I said before. But that one's all done. We're going to work with... This guy right here. This one's going to take the same process. I'm just going to take it, glue it down, and then mount it through on all of its spots on here. And it will look like that when it's all done. Most importantly, you should also note that I embossed my signature in reverse on this one, whereas this one is scribed into the top side. So that's one thing to consider, how you can handle signing your work with this. There's multiple different ways, especially if you know how to do it in reverse. Um, but I'll do this the same way as I did this. We'll get the, to the... Uh, other panel, which is not going to get any sort of finishing nails, because I'm going to make sure that one's all nice and clean, so there's nothing to to tack through the right way. And we'll show you all the different processes when they're all cleaned up. All right, so I have all of my pieces. They're glued up together. They've all been clamped down. All the glue, uh, glue is cured. I've trimmed some of them up on this one, and I've shown you a couple of things to watch out for. Um, uh, so, so there's little things we're going to talk about now. Uh, the first off, this one. This one was pretty good. I cleaned up the edges, like I said I would. I didn't have to repaint anything. And this one's pretty much straightforward. Um, I just had that little bit of a uh, edge on there. Now, like I said, you just need to have something where the glue doesn't attach to it. Most plastics do not attach to Gorilla Glue. So this is, like I said, that's a good one to, to use, just because there's you know, it's, it's just one of those those things because this is a urethane glue, the, uh, so any sort of plastic or Teflon paper or anything else like that will, will work well. If you do have a little bit of a squirt out from when it cures, uh, let's let's show you how to quickly take care of that. Anything that's big like that, you might be able to just break off like that. If it isn't like these little trim marks in here, a little bit of a flat edge and some scraping inside of it. We'll get it pretty straightforward. Now, in this one, this one's the collage one. So, because there was a little bit of a difference between the height of this panel, the wood, and the raised up edge on here, I had to clamp it down, and I also screwed it in because I like to. I, I like sort of had it screwed it in one place, 
so I screwed it in in a couple other places. Um, size of the screws sometimes matter. This one, just for example, I just wanted to show where I placed them in there, so I didn't sand them down or grind them at all. So, but this one's done, and uh, I, I sort of like that one. I still got to varnish the edge and stuff, but that's about it. The next one comes to these guys. This one I did not clamp down, and this one I did clamp down. Um, now there's, there's going to be two different ways to tell whether they're all cured and, and together. This one had the screws in the corner, so I know this one's going to be on there no matter what. Uh, now, without my blade extended because you never want to cut your hand by accident, I went through and when I was working on this, I said there was a little bit of a give on this area here, and I never got found the way to, to properly get this to cure. You notice there's still a little bit of give here because there was no glue in this area. Over here, it's hard as a rock. There's no give, there's no bounce. This glue is fully expanded all the way out underneath here. So this is it is cushioned pretty well. It's also filled up all these grooves without squirting out too much. So I like this, this way I do this stuff for, for these panels because it sort of fills up this area without squirting out the edge. And the few times it sort of did, I was while I was watching it, I was able to clean up the edge real fast and then didn't have to worry about it. Now on the other one, this one has no screw holes. This one also, so I had to clamp this guy down. If we look right here, on the, the metal, there's some urethane little, little bits. That's where it extruded out the side and puffed up over the edge. So I had to trim that down and, and this is extremely thin so you can't really scrape a whole lot. Now the downside is that with urethanes, a urethane foam like Gorilla Glue, that's hard to get off. Um, I can sand it, but this is a thin metal. I can scrape it, but this is a thin metal. So just for example, I'm going to leave this because it's a good good teaching point of, of to watch your stuff and to make sure you go through and you, you wipe your edge a few times. Um, I did cut through the paint a couple times on my decorative edge, so I just you know matched up the paint and it works well. This will get a good clear coat, but this is done. To tell where I have thin spots, because I said that some of these spots will fill up, is to just tap it. If you hear that, that is pretty solid. I can press down on this and it doesn't give it all. Over here, hear that hollow drum sound? I can also press down here. There's no urethane here. It might, it might have been th super thin, so it might just be filling, filling up the, 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 the bottom side of this thing. So as you go through, that's super filled up, that's filled up, that's filled up, that's filled up, hollow, hollow, filled up, filled up, filled up, half hollow. You can feel it, and I can even push down and see that it gives a little bit. Filled up, filled up, definitely filled up. So, there's a few ways of telling it. This guy right here, since most of this is all supported, I don't have to worry about anything ever compressing this and distorting it. Up here, maybe a little bit. So on larger panels that have high raised up areas, this is a good glue to use because I know that this is going to be braced. You know, I don't have to worry about wax filling it like a lot, like like uh, some of the old ways of 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 doing metal prints or metal work or anything else like that. It all fills up with uh, urethane glue. You just have to watch for some extra extrusion out the side. Um, so that's it. So the next thing you usually have to cover is just how to mount it, and that's just personal preference. Small things like this, I'd probably use that one that has like a little nail hole that you can just hang with you know, through through one single nail, um, or a couple eye holes on the top and hang it from a guided line. This one right here, I used a, uh, a cleat, but there's numerous ways of doing any of it. Just got to figure out what works best for you, and. Hope you guys learned from something from this, and next up will be printmaking.